So, fresh from playing a 23-year-old high school pupil in East of Eden, James Dean got the chance to really stretch himself in his second feature, Nicholas Ray's Rebel Without a Cause, by playing a 23-year-old high school pupil. <laughs> but in the 1950s! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Such different. So range. Many acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. This film is Dean's most famous and provides the most iconic image of the man in his Red Windbreaker. But we first meet Dean's Jim Stark in a tuxedo. Having left a shindig at his parents' country club, got drunk and then got arrested, and awaiting interview in the naughty youth section of a Los Angeles police station. Also here at the same time are Natalie Woods and Sal Mineo's actually high school aged Judy and Plato. Before I go on though, it's particularly weird to have a love of interest between somebody who's like 15 or 16 and a 23 year old. Yes, it, it looks mm. absolutely terrible in this. It, yes. It's the same criticism I had in the last film, but it's just even worse here because he's actually <laughs> acting. It's people who are the age they're supposed to be, and he's <laughs> yes. clearly a decade older than them. He's, like. He sticks out like <laughs> Prince Andrew at a party. <laughs> 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 Does he sweat much? <laughs> Judy turns out to be a neighbour of Jim's and her talking to him on the way to school the next morning prompts her thuggish boyfriend to target Jim. Maybe. Maybe that's why. Really, it could be anything. <laughs> As said, thug, Buzz, Kobe Allen, exists only to be a threat to Jim and along with his friends has all of the depth of, well, graphene. <laughs> <laughs> a character with actual depth turns out to be Plato who actually has cause to rebel having been abandoned by both his mother and father and left in the care of the family's maid, Marietta Cante, who clearly loves him, but, well, she's not his family. Lonely and bullied, Plato immediately becomes attracted to Jim, looking to him to be some combination of friend, lover and father, and they begin a friendship. Though it may not last long, as Buzz, apparently bored, starts a knife fight with Jim outside of the planetarium. When that ends prematurely, with a wonderfully brave security guard running away to get a very old man to deal with it instead, <laughs> they agree to take part in a chicken race. Um, for those not familiar with that, that's a really stupid thing you do in stolen cars and racing towards a cliff and the last oh, person to jump out is a chicken. Sorry, if you had said playing chicken First earlier, time. that would have... Right, I literally... The reason I was baffled when you said chicken race earlier was I was actually picturing people <laughs> racing chickens. <laughs> it's some sort of variant of a cockfighter. Yes, I'm sorry. That a genuine mistake on my part. <laughs> For some not entirely believable reason, Buzz is unable to exit his car and ends up inside it. At the bottom of a cliff. On fire. <laughs> Sick transit Gloria Buzzy. <laughs> Jim is a troubled but not bad person and wants to turn himself into the police for his part in the death, much to the horror of his considerably less moral parents. He doesn't do so immediately, but his presence at the police station convinces Buzzy's friends that he's turned them in, and they set out to deal with him, setting in motion a chain of events that will end in someone's death. While I suspect this is already pretty obvious, I really don't get Dean's enduring appeal. It's good to know that there is something of substance there and that he actually had some talent, even if the accusations of aping Marlon Brando do have some merit. Though, as already mentioned, that's more valid of a complaint in East of Eden than Rebel. As Jimmy Stark, Dean gives a sensitive portrayal of a young man tortured by demons he himself doesn't understand and can't identify, even if he's given to mugging and overplaying it at times. Most of them, probably. <laughs> um, though for my money, it's Sal Mineo as Plato that's the standout actor. Though the problems with Rebel Without a Cause lie with the story rather than the acting, though I still found it passable, but no more. It's an incredibly angsty film, and like the teenagers in its story, doesn't seem to know quite what about. It is, in fact, a particularly well-named film. There is evidence of a collective societal hand-wringing at this whole newfangled teenager phenomenon. Won't someone please think of the children who we don't understand and probably want to kill us? <laughs> and the never-out-of-fashion demonising of youth. Though the film seems to point its finger at a failure of parenting, also seen in the discomfort of Judy's father and his difficulty dealing with her becoming a woman, but to be fair, she's super creepy around him, though it may be mutual creepiness, <laughs> and a and the general decrying of the emasculation of the American man. But for me, it's the incredibly compressed time frame that's the greatest problem. The events of the film take place over roughly 24 hours, 
and that's barely enough time for all of the depicted events to occur, never mind the relationships that come out of them. While Judy falling in love with Jim is an order of magnitude more believable than Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson doing so in Giant, what with their shared traumatic experience being mixed with at least a little of the chemistry there very conspicuously isn't between Hudson and Taylor, it happens a matter of hours after Judy's boyfriend was chargled in a stolen car. Yeah, she got over that quickly, didn't she? Yes. <laughs> a little propriety, please. I mean, it's like, what, it's 90 minutes, two hours or something yeah. after her boyfriend got killed in a car crash? <laughs> You've got to move fast in these days. Stuart Stern's screenplay deals in some spectacularly sweeping generalisations. All teenagers are monsters, but it's the fault of all parents who are all useless and every child would be much better off if the government was put in charge of their upbringing. <laughs> it also manages to be a very Daily Mail-like film in its attitude to the youths, <laughs> yet also entirely antithetical to this in some of its sympathies. Wait a minute... So seeming to stand for one thing while also at the same time seeming to stand for another diametrically opposed thing? Wow, that really is like the Daily Mail. <laughs> Though unlike the Daily Mail, I found Rebel Without a Cause tolerable and with some merit. Not unenjoyable, but Rebel Without a Cause does not stand up in 2019. And while American society was very different in 1955, and therefore its resonance then may simply be lost to us now, that doesn't explain the other five decades in between in which this, and Dean's legend, persisted. I'll apparently have to look elsewhere for the answers to my questions. I guess I enjoyed this a bit more, but it does feel like a time capsule of a time that probably didn't actually exist. And <laughs> it's all a bit strange and baffling, and I don't, I don't believe a single character motivation in any of this. Dean, in terms of a performance, it's better but again he seems like he's in a different film from everybody else <laughs> you know, in particular right at the start when he's getting interviewed by the police and his, his parents come in and where he delivers that you're, you're tearing me apart line it's like it's a good delivery but not in that scene where everyone else is acting like a normal human being and he for no reason just starts screaming it's weird <laughs> you're tearing me apart Lisa yes very much so <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my thought when I watched it yes <laughs> Uh, um, I think it fares better over the rest of the film um, kind of won me back aside a little bit I guess the actions that occur over the rest of it seem more in line with his performance given it is somewhat over the top melodramatic in a number of places so I suppose that fits better it, it kind of scanned a bit better but yeah as, as a film I thought it was okay as you've, you've already mentioned the main criticisms it just the time frame's unbelievable, the character motivations don't feel particularly believable, and I'm not sure the actual points that the film is reaching at regarding the youth of today were valid then. <laughs> and they certainly don't seem like it looking back and looking from you know 60 years hence, it did not seem like this was particularly truthy. All that said, I suppose I did enjoy it a reasonable amount, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, if, if I hadn't seen it, I, I don't think it'd be my life would be any worse off for it. Yeah, this, I mean, it's an it's an okay film, but there are literally tens of thousands of okay films. Mm -hmm. Why is it this film and this actor that took hold like almost nobody else ever has? It can't just be since. the dreamy eyes and the hair, but yes, um, maybe it's, it is. Good looking as Paul Walker. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't quite get it. I mean, I sort of do get, in terms of character, I think James Dean's character is the one character I do get, I do buy, in that, I mean, it's called Rebel Without a Cause. And it kind of makes sense. It's like, he's in a pretty well off family. He's got everything he wants, and he, but he's not happy and doesn't know why. And yeah, just, maybe there's mental health issues. I kind of get that. You kind of see his anguish that he's like, I should be happy, and I'm not, and I don't know why. Yes, what is he rebelling against? What yeah, does he got? Um, but it's it's the other things that don't really fly in those regards, I guess, the, the other characters. I just want to pop back to Sal Minio for a moment, Scott. Mm. Um, it seems really obvious to me, like, from the moment he meets James Dean, uh, well, maybe not so much in the police station, the, right in the opening scene, mm. but after that, he clearly fancies him. He's clearly gay. Mm. Um, apparently, that was flew completely under the radar in 1955 and I can't work out how. It seems so obvious to me. They didn't have the gays then. <laughs> yeah, Drew Liberace yeah. flew under the radar. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's a good point, Greg. Um, 
I think I'd, I think <laughs> an answer that I think I think people were of, or you know, I certainly had, had an element, maybe even a majority of people were of such a small-minded uh, mindset about um, homosexuality and whatnot at the time, and were so offended by it that they were just that willing to accept us. If you said, if you said no, I'm not gay, you could be as camp as you wanted, and they would accept that answer purely because they didn't want to compute that you actually were. Yes, well, I think there was just this there was this willing refusal to accept it to such a degree that you could almost be openly such, and <laughs> as long as you said no, no, I'm not, people just sort of smiled, and went good. <laughs> yeah, I, I must have been not so much with the, this character film, although actually that um, that actor's career basically was torpedoed because he was alleged at least to be gay. But at the same point, I guess if you were, I don't know, maybe in bed with the right people, certainly knew the right people in Hollywood, even like in the press, they would keep that secret for you. Mm. Which is really weird. Like Rock Hudson, for years, yeah. nobody <laughs> knew that he was gay. and But it was an, an open secret within the industry. Mm. But people decided that to keep that from us, which would not happen nowadays. Um, well, I, I don't know. Well, maybe. <laughs> but in general, though, it's... it's it's a different time, but at the same time, I still look at that, and your Liberace point is a very, very valid one. But as I was like, watching this, like, that guy's clearly gay, and it's like, he clearly fancies him, because that's what I don't get. Like, don't you understand that, like, regardless of whether it's male, male, female, female, or male, female, when people fancy other people, it's kind of obvious, and it's really obvious in this film. Mm. <laughs> but people apparently didn't pick up on it or refused to pick Just, up on yeah, it. Just, yeah, blind to it, yeah. Yeah, it's so strange. <laughs> 